this session, we're going to think about how much extra a company would be willing to pay for for one additional unit of scarce resources. The topic that we'll be covering in this video is all about shadow prices. This is an extension of limiting factor analysis as discussed in the previous two videos. A shadow price is the additional contribution generated from one additional unit of limiting factor. Or, in other words, we can say that it is the opportunity cost of not having the use of one extra unit. A shadow price is the maximum extra amount that a company would be willing to pay for one additional unit of scarce resource. A shadow price is not the maximum price which should be paid, but rather it is the maximum extra that a company would be willing to pay over and above the current purchase price for a limited resource. Let's say, for example, that a company has reached its maximum capacity for its permanent labour force. They may consider hiring in temporary workers or paying the current workforce over time. Management will want to know what the maximum amount that they should be paying for the temporary staff should be or the amount of overtime they can actually afford to pay. If a company is not utilizing the maximum availability of one of their resources, we call this slack. This may occur when we have a limited amount of material and an overcapacity of labor hours, or vice versa. The workers will run out of material to work with eventually and will sit idle until additional material is purchased. Or on the other side, we'll have material that will be stockpiled as we do not have enough labor in order to convert this material into product. If the entire resource available is required for the optimal solution, then the company will be willing to pay a premium, a shadow price, to obtain the additional resource. If the company does not require all the available resources for the optimal solution, then they will not be willing to pay a premium and there would be no shadow price. This is when slack occurs. Let's consider the following scenario. A company makes two products, X and Y. Sales demand of X is 10,000 units and sales demand of Y is 12,000 units. Direct labor and production are restricted to 60,000 direct labor hours and direct labor is paid at $10 per hour. It takes five hours to produce one unit of X and it takes four hours to produce one unit of Y. The contribution per unit of X is $8 and the contribution per unit of Y is $6. Based on the above information, the optimal production plan has been calculated to be 10,000 units of X and 2,500 units of Y. What is the shadow price per direct labor hour and for how many additional hours of labor does this apply? Usually in this type of question we would be required to calculate the optimal production plan but in the scenario above this information has already been given to us. Make sure that you are able to calculate this opt optimal production plan yourself. If you have trouble with this, please go back and relook at the video on limiting factors. Let's now consider what would happen if one additional labor hour was available to purchase. In other words, what would we pay as an overtime rate? Because we have met the demand of X in the optimal production plan, the company would use any additional labor hours to manufacture product Y. There is no need to produce any additional product X. The contribution that would be earned per additional unit of product Y is $6. Therefore, the additional contribution per direct labor hour would be $6 divided by 4 hours, which would equal $1.50. This is the shadow price, the maximum extra that the company would be prepared to pay for an additional hour of labor. Therefore, the maximum price that the company would be willing to pay for each additional hour would therefore be $10, which is what they pay for a normal direct labor hour, plus the shadow price of $1.50, which equals $11.50. 
Once the company has met the demand of Y, the labor would no longer be a limiting factor. Therefore, once they have made an additional 9,500 units of Y, the shadow price will no longer be applicable. Therefore, the shadow price would be applicable for the next 38,000 hours. 9,000 units of Y multiplied by 4 hours. Now that we have looked at calculating the shadow price for a single limiting factor, what happens when we have multiple limiting factors? Let's consider the following scenario. In a linear programming problem, to determine the contribution maximizing production and sales volume for two products, X and Y, the following information is available. It takes two direct labor hours to make product X and four hours to make product Y. There are a total of 10,000 direct labor hours available. Product X uses 4 kilograms of material and Product Y uses 2 kilograms of material. There's a total of 14,000 kilograms available. The contribution per unit is $12 and $18 for Product X and Product Y respectively. The total contribution at this optimal production plan is $54,000. The optimal production of X and Y has been calculated as 3,000 units of X and 1,000 units of Y. This would be calculated using linear programming since there are two limited resources, labor and material. It's important that you are able to calculate this um, optimal level of production. If you're struggling with it, please do look back at the video on linear programming. Using this information, we need to calculate the shadow price of one additional hour, i.e. what is the contribution that the company will make if they receive one additional unit of labor. Therefore, we need to calculate the contribution using simultaneous equations as if one extra additional labor hour were